This is Elections 2017. Women make up 50% of the country's population, but the fact remains that they still don't make up half the seats in Parliament. While it's good that more women are putting their hands up to contest, it's equally important that they know what they are getting themselves into. In the last election in 2012, 135 women ran strong campaigns during the elections. Only three survived, Sohe MP Delilah Gore, Lays Lujaya Kuza, and Eastern Highlands Governor Julie Soso. This year, 50 female candidates intend to run in this year's elections uh, and this week being trained on parliamentary processes. In the studio with us, we're with Pangu Party advisor, strategic advisor, Dalsiana Somare Brash. So really the political interest by women here is what some of them had to say. There needs to be a little bit more support for women. Um, I think there is a general cry and um, a general feeling of, of giving opportunities for women to, to contest these elections and, and for um, um, elections to come. But um, I think the timing is right for women to intervene. Uh, I'm contesting this uh, 2017 election for telephone and open seat is that in the last 40 years the political leadership has been held by the men and you know looking at the service uh, delivery uh, not so much of you know a good service delivery down to where the people are so I rather go 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 and give a give a go on this uh, 2017 election for the open seat. Uh, I think I think it's more the uh, the cultural way in Papua New Guinea we have more like the man is the head of the family, the man is the is the power the leader of the community and it's always given the woman as a second class back in the in the kitchen. And I think we've uh, that has been a big barrier in preventing women. Uh, but after forty one years I th I think that women are now uh, ready to take on the lead uh, to move forward. Uh, Dalciana, do you know, do many of these women know what they're getting themselves into in terms of campaign strategies, national policy issues and parliamentary processes? Yeah, I, I have to say that I, you know, sitting in amongst um, incredibly qualified women, you know, at community level, many of these people, these, these women have had such major contributions in the community that are uh, you know, that, that are, are overlooked to begin with. So, I mean, in terms of all the technical stuff, uh, the, you know, the standing orders and parliamentary procedure, I guess that's a space where, you know, that, that can be uh, learnt in, in uh, a short period of time. What these women are bringing to this space is very, very important because there's a, there's an, there appears to be an understanding right down at the ward level, connecting up to the local level, understanding the importance of districts in relation to province and to the national level. Um, our system requires that we understand uh, the links in, in our governing system. And th these ladies are so well prepared and I'm, I'm excited that, you know, there's such a, uh, an induction, if you like, uh, introduced and promoted, sponsored by the United Nations and other, other sponsors. Um, and yeah, there, there are, I only walked in on the second day, I couldn't be here uh, at, at the beginning of the course, um, but the, it's broken up into, into various, under various themes, obviously, but with, with some of, hearing some of what uh, the women are talking about, um, learning the, the rules as they are institutionally inside Parliament, to me appears to be the simplest part they've already got the skills. They've got exactly what we need in our communities. And I'm really excited about that. Okay. Um, the practice parliament for women training is, is um, preparing them for the elections, the coming elections. But obviously they would need more than that. They would need party backing. We talked about um, election nomination fees and all that. Uh, how do you see political parties support people whom they know have a better chance of winning, obviously not women. How do you see party support can be encouraged to extend to cover women? We, um, I guess I can only speak from uh, experience. 
uh, in, in our party uh, selection criteria um, means that we're starting at a very inclusive position. Mm. So it, it's criteria that, that shows or, or that accentuates links that the individuals have uh, in, in their community. And when we, when we understand what the system requires of us, it, the system requires that we be legislators. So in, in terms of lawmaking, what, what better candidates to have than people who are giving birth to children, who are raising them, who have these productive roles and reside over a major part of our livelihoods and society um, that, you know, I, I think in, in again, our going back to the selection criteria in our party, we're, we're right from the very beginning, we're mainstreaming this notion of equality yeah. so that it's yeah. inclusive right from the beginning. Yeah. So I, I hope that answers your question. Okay. You're watching Elections 2017, the live simulcast. You can take part in the show by um, joining us. Uh, the numbers to call are 325-3439 and 325-0084. The numbers to text in if you have a question or a comment to contribute, DGCL 7958 and the B-Mobile number 7565-0703. Dalciana, the um, the notion of um, getting women elected into into parliament. Um, the last election was a big win for women. Three three candidates. Um, um, there was um, Julie Soso, the first female governor of Papua New Guinea, and um, she was a uh, constant contender in elections. She. She kept contesting and, and she go, eventually got in. Delilah Gore was um, um, the daughter of a chief and obviously she was a senior public servant too. And uh, that probably played to an advantage. Um, Lujaya Kuza did um, um, campaign fiercely. She told a television interview that she covered all uh, um, this, um, um, the LLGs within the electorate. And um, um, Dr. Gelu from the Integrity of Political Party says women have to understand the laws to get into parliament. How does these two notions um, differ that um, um, status within the community and an educational status, um, how can they be fused together to enable women to, to get um, recognized and voted into parliament? Yeah, that's a, gee, that's a long question. Um, I, I'll, I guess I'll answer it in a couple of parts. Uh, the, I think the first part of your question really asked about, um, you know, recognition and, and uh, I, I can, maybe I'll just talk about my experience and what my expectations are. Um, and I'm, I'm contesting a seat that's been held by one person for 49 years. Um, so already, uh, that's a highly emotional, there's a highly emotional link to an individual. Um, so it, it, that's a very big challenge. So I guess my, my situation is quite peculiar. So, and I'll go back to answering the question. Um, th there are certain things that are, that are at play that I see. Uh, I've, I, I'm entering this race because I'm standing up um, in the strong belief that change is required. Um, the, the Papua New Guinea has experienced in the last four years a uh, tremendous um, eco uh, economic decline. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a 14 to 16 billion kina economy, we're still not sure about the figures. Um, and there's been institutional deterioration, our population's growing mm -hmm. at almost 3%. Um, the infrastructure can't handle uh, how big we're growing. And I'm going into this, so I, I think this answers the point about Dr. Gellow uh, suggesting that women need to understand uh, the laws. I think there's also, there has to be a requisite uh, standard or a benchmark that says that, that people have to understand uh, the economic conditions. Because you've got a short period of time, you've got five years to make a contribution. So that's equally, uh, you know, I don't know where we're going to begin to place prominence, but it has to be, it has to happen across the continuum. You have to understand the law. 
You have to know what's happening in relation to a deficit. You have to understand that we need an alternative revenue strategy. At the moment, we're only focusing on oil and gas. Um, we've got a sleeping giant in agriculture where we've got various sectors like fisheries and tourism and, and, and forestry that in themselves don't have sectoral growth policies that have been enforced so that we're actually able to add to GDP, for instance. So I, I, the, the questions uh, it needs to be expanded out and understood in relation to the system, in relation to our peculiar circumstance and political um, landscape, and, and also where we're at in relation to uh, the, the gender equity uh, discussion. So I think there are many women that are qualified um, to, to enter this race. I mean, if we're going to go on benchmarks, I mean, we, we really need to ask the question about the performance of males. You know, we, 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 we tend to be forced to jump through hoops uh, to actually even qualify at the start of the race. Yet the poor record of male performance hasn't been assessed to the record. We're relying on laws, we're relying on arrest orders, we're re relying on, on mechanisms that are no longer working. So in my personal view, I think we should be casting the net wider and inviting Papua New Guineans instead of having a male-female discussion all the time. I, I think there are many qualified people and we have to be talking about people as opposed to what gender you bring uh, to, to this. You're watching Elections 2017. We'll be more up, back with more after this break. <laughs> 